All right, hey, what's up, guys? Coach Mac, play fast football. All right, today we're going to take a look at uh, some three by one low red zone passing concepts. All right, some things you can run off of your base passing concepts. Uh, the biggest thing is you're going to have to make sure that these should all be called, uh, you know, dependent upon the coverages that you are seeing. Right, so I'm just going to draw them up to generic six man pressure, goal line looks man. But you're going to get brackets, you're going to get zone coverages, you're going to get a bunch of different things. So you got to be able to understand what you're getting when you want to call each concept, all right? So make sure you check out some of our partners, GameStrat, sideline replay company we use. I've used them the last couple of years. If you're looking for highly reliable, highly affordable, make sure you check out GameStrat. Dome Hats, the headwear company we use, Bishop Kenny High School, play fast football. This is my fitted Crusader hat, dome logo on the side. All right, stock hats suck. Why go get a stock hat when you can completely customize your own hat? Their new turn two program, they're getting them out even quicker. All right, so it's an even better deal for everybody. Baker Sporting Goods Company we use, coaches shirts like this. Game night, uh, our sideline apparel is from Baker Sporting Goods. Uh, they're in the shoulder pad business now, fan stores. It's really a one-stop shop for everything that you need for your program. Check out Baker Sporting Goods, Just Play Football. Uh, the playbook software that we use, uh, we use it for our meetings, installs, anything I do on Patreon, I draw on Just Play. Anything, any clinics I speak at, I use Just Play presentation mode. So it's our playbook, you can quiz players. You can use videos, you can use diagrams. If you want to take your program to the next level, you got to get with Just Play. Difference USA, the ultimate striking machine. Thousands of reps, don't need a partner, it's just you and a Difference USA ultimate striking machine. Don't have to teach a guy, hold a bag, hold a hand shield. Don't have to worry about providing resistance, any of that stuff. Set it up right on your racks. You want to strike violently, you got to practice striking violently, right? So when you get into the low red zone, all right, and what we're looking at is, is right now three by one combinations. All right, and then again, we're talking about the front side of three by one. The back side is where you can really get exotic based on what you're seeing protection wise, what you can do, can you get a back out, right? You can get your uh, matchups on the back side. Right now, we're going to concentrate more on the front side, all right, to where we're going to go. All right, the first one we're going to talk about, all right, the first one that we are going to talk about is kind of off of, you know, expecting man coverage, all right, and, and running kind of some pick stuff. So what we're going to do is we're going to take three, all right, and we're going to outside release three, and we're going to work him to that near upright, all right, and, that, and he's going to work the back line in the end zone to that near upright. We're going to work a pick concept on the outside where we're going to run number two at the corner. We're going to foot fire release, slow at the bottom, set up the corner here. The receiver coming back underneath has to go under the pick, all right? So the job of the picker is to understand where the corner's playing, how soft, how hard, what's his leverage for my angle, all right? I've got to push that. The, the outside guy needs to be slow at the bottom, foot fire, inside out, whatever release you want to make, sell it here. We're bringing that back under. And then the pick guy wraps after the pick. The pick guy wraps, and he works that hash mark pylon on the back of the end zone there. All right, again, to the single side, all right, you can run fade if you like the matchup, fade comeback. If you can protect, all right, and you've got the back over here and you like your back and you think you can protect, maybe you're not getting six-man stuff, you could possibly run some type of, all right, snag wheel back shoulder concept to the back, right? So on the back side, to the single receiver, you can build in whatever you want. All right, front side, if we think we're getting man and we love, all right, the pick concept underneath, Mandatory outside release, try and clear that out. All right, work the back upright, back in the end zone, that front side upright. Here's that hash mark pylon, right? So if you looked at like landmarks on the field, if you're working off of an upright here and a sideline hash mark, there's a pylon and then there's a back pylon there, right? So you're working in that first concept, working a little pick play, probably more of a man beater. If you don't get man or you don't get the inside route, now you wrap the pick player back behind. So if you get a zone concept, you can create maybe a high-low there, okay? So great concept, first man. Great concept if you love your number one. Great concept if you have a smart number two that knows how to set angles and, and, and run the pick stuff. But then you also get the wrap behind him, and you get the back of the end zone, all right, uh, right there with your number three. All right, second one you're going to run off your stick concept. All right, so if you run it off your stick concept, all right, so what you're going to run is we are going to run three on the nods. So we're going to run stick nods. So we're going to go here. All right, make it look like the stick. Nod will end up back at that same upright just about. All right, outside receiver is going to work outside release. Back to the end zone dig, so he's going to work back to that hash mark pylon. Inside guy is going to make it look like stick, so he's going to sell, all right, the 
In, uh, originally, he's going to make it look like almost like the pick play, but he's going to work back to his spacing in stick. So he's going to work out and whip back under. So it ends up looking very similar to the spacing in the normal stick concept, right? So this will look a little bit like the pick route. If you've got a really good route runner here, he brings it out, settles it down, comes back underneath. Again, on the back side, you can run any individual one-on-one -on -one routes. You can get the back involved if you need the back in protection. All right, if you need the back, you'll probably get man-to-man -man out here so you can work your single receiver, your best guy, your tallest guy, your best jumper, whatever it is. You've got all your single side concepts right there. Right now, we're just talking about low red zone, front of three by one. All right, so you've got your pick concept, your stick nod concept. All right, and then uh, the last one that we are going to run, NFL Dusty concept. All right, so we we'll probably change our splits a little bit here, but you'll get the theory of it. Last one we're going to run is fin fin corner. Some people call it double under corner. All right, so the last one we're going to run here is we're going to run fin by number one, fin by number two. Three is going to work the stick and work that back pylon on the corner route, right? So we've got double under fins, double fin corner. All right, so you're working fin, fin. Corner route, all right, again, really good if you're getting zone stuff and they're trying to play heels on the goal line, you can get that route over the top. If you're getting man stuff and your number three's a dude, all right, it forces them to either inside out bracket it. If they have to inside out bracket your best receiver, you're going to get true one-on-ones in a lot of other places. That's up to you as a uh, coordinator, excuse me, to figure out where. Backside, you've got all the concepts that you want to build in, all right, if you're working man-to-man -man stuff and you've been working a wheel route, you've got a really good back, now you can work... All right, almost like fade stop on the outside here. So push, all right, fade stop there. Push the wheel route here and run the Texas angle route back underneath. If you're, all right, if your tailback's a really good route runner, it almost ends up a version of the whip route, right? So if they got the mic trying to play man on the back, okay. The only thing you've got to understand is if they're sending six and we only have five, can we get this guy out? Can we get him in the route? Can we get him in the concept? Can we protect it if it's going to be a longer developing route if they send six? So as an offensive coordinator, what is their goal line, short yardage, low red zone deal? Are they a pressure team? Are they sending a bunch that we have to protect? Can we win one-on-one? -on -one? Are they going to play heels on a goal line or some type of goal line zone match coverage where maybe we can go high-low, right? So those are three three-by-one concepts that give you a couple different theories of who you want to get the ball to, where you want to get the ball, all right, in the distribution of the routes based on the coverages they're playing. All right, always think players, not plays. Always think about where your best dude is. Okay, if your best dude is to the single, carry your concepts to the three receiver side and know you've got your one man game. If your back is really good and you feel like you can protect it, get him involved in the red zone. A couple different routes you can run with the back that are really good. All right, on the red zone, everybody likes to run pick wheels to him and it becomes back shoulder throws. Off the wheel, you run the Texas or the angle route. So, a lot of really good things that you can do in the low red zone. The biggest key is carry enough concepts to attack the different coverages you're going to get. Okay, don't get overboard with how many concepts you have because then the execution is going to be all right at risk and you're going to start to get sloppy because you can't execute all those things. You can't practice them all enough. All right, have a man beater, have a high low or a, or a you know, zone coverage beater. Find plays that get to or get the ball to your best receiver. All right, so like if you're getting your number three bracketed, stick now, it's a pretty good deal, tough to cover. When he goes to run a stick, if they bracket, the outside guy takes him. Then when he runs a nod, if the inside guy's not a really good player, if the inside guy playing man sees him run the stick, he might shift his eyes back to the queue because he thinks that three's going out, all right, if it's some type of bracket or combo deal. So a lot of different things you can do down there in the low red zone. You've got to know coverages. You've got to know what you're trying to attack. And I think it's really important that – you are spending a bunch of time teaching your QB what the other team does in the low red zone. What do they like to play? What are their tendencies? Can you tell anything by a lineman? Can you tell anything by their eyes? A lot of times if teams are playing like a goal line concept or some type of flat, you know, across the goal line concept, a lot of times their eyes may be looking in at the cube. If it's a man concept, eyes might be on receivers. All right, so you got to spend a lot of time teaching your quarterback what he's going to get, what you think he's going to get based on your, your tendencies and your reports that you've ran, and then the concepts that you like and where the football should go based on what you're seeing, right? So low red zone passing, I know as a defense coordinator, really a pain in the neck to defend against, trying to figure out whether you're going to be a man team or more of a zone team. You run out of real estate as a defense, 
All right, when the back of the end zone starts getting back here, what kind of base zone coverages can we run? There's really no room to defend back there, so everything's a little bit tighter. Offense runs out of room, but we run out of space to distribute patterns as well. All right, so how much can we play any of our base stuff? Are we gaining anything by playing true zone concepts? All right, so if you played some type of five under three deep, all right, you can defend the fade ball over the top, maybe you can defend the post here, but there's a lot of room behind the five under, all right, that, that they can throw the ball. Same thing when you play seven across, you're gonna get high load, right? So it's all about what they like to do in the low red zone and then attacking what they like to do and having enough answers. All right, so I think the low red zone passing game, three by one stuff gets real interesting. I think there's a couple really cool concepts that you can run, don't have to spend an inordinate amount of time on it. You can spend a solid amount of time in your practice plan on situational passing, low red zone passing, 10, 7, 5, maybe progress it down to the two or the three. Talk to your kids about situations, plays you would run in those situations. For us on defense, it gives us a chance to defend those situations. So we're working more man deals. We're working more of our combination coverages with man with zone help underneath. All right, we might not play a ton of man with help behind it because we run out of room, but we may play a bunch of man with vision and break guys underneath if we're expecting passes from the five yard line. Now we can play outside leverage. We can get help on inside routes. So it helps both sides of the ball. All right. Concepts you're carrying to attack coverages that you're seeing, giving your quarterback to uh, getting, getting your quarterback to understand where the football needs to go, finding his best matchups based on the coverage and a route combination, and then working ways for your best players and move the pieces around to get your best players where they need to be. The great thing about all these concepts is you can shift trade motion to get into them. As long as the kids understand the concept, you can be two by two motion to it. You can be three by one with the three outside motion to it. All right, so you can window dress it. You can change it up. You can do a bunch of different things to disguise it. All right, but you've got a couple round combinations that are really good, uh, low red zone, get really good at them, become effective and at executing and running them. All right, and then just know as a coordinator when you do your game plan work, all right, if I'm three by one low red zone, what do they like to do? How do they like to play it? As always, protection first. Figure out if you can protect those things and how you need to protect those things. If you can't get the back out, so be it. If you can't get the back out, they're probably limited in the amount of coverages you can play. All right, if they can play a bunch of different coverages, dropping six or seven guys, that means you're going to be able to get the back out because they can't send as many. All right, so everything is a give and take situation. There's pros and cons to everything. If I pressure as a defensive coordinator, not a lot of coverages I can play behind it. All right, if I send six, not many choices I have behind it on the goal line, short yard, it's low red zone. All right, if I send four and I play extra guys in coverage, not a lot I can do to get to the quarterback other than win up front my one-on-one -on -one matchups, but now the back can probably get out. All right, so chess pieces, moving players around, window dress it. Every week come up with a new wrinkle to that three-by-one, motion in, motion across, shift to it, trade to it, maybe put in some things that are run from cluster or compressed sets and get to similar theories and just teach your kids the departure angles and the spacing of where they need to get to if they're compressed. All right, a lot of things you can do low red zone in the passing game. Uh, it, you know, it's fun. It's fun to look at. It's fun to figure out how you want to attack those things. Pain in the neck on defense. we got to have a couple different answers. All right, so uh, put your time and effort into a couple things that you like. Those are three concepts that I like. All right, three things that I've seen that, that can be very effective on the offense. Three things that I don't like defending that get us in trouble sometimes when we are working on situational passing deals. So we're always trying to find other ways that we can protect our low red zone coverages so that we can defend the things that we're seeing. All right, so this was three by one today. It can be a bunch of different formations. You can do it from two by two. You can do it with tight ends in the game, fullbacks in the game. All right, the idea is to have a couple things you like. Attack man, attack zone, attack matching coverages, attack flat seven across or zone coverages that defend the goal line and maybe give you throws over the top. Have your answers, work your plan. You should be in good shape. All right, remember to check out some of our partners, all right, that we mentioned in the beginning. All right, trying to get to 25,000 subscribers, click that subscribe button. Tell your friends if they watch it, click that subscribe button. Turn the notifications on, you know, every time we do a video or we go on YouTube Live. I was on YouTube Live last night. We had a great hour and 40 minute discussion. All right, a bunch of guys asking questions, uh, talking between all the coaches there and, and answering uh, questions and, and, and sharing information back and forth. So if your notifications on, you know, when we go on YouTube Live. Trying to get the 4 million views, so uh, keep watching the videos if you like them. Thumbs up, thumbs down. All right, lets me know what you like, what you don't like. As always, leave a comment. If you leave a comment, I see it. I either respond to it or I try and do 
a video if you're asking me to do a video. All right, so if you're in the southeast or different parts of the country right now, it's hot out there, adjust your practices, follow rules, know what you got to do with the heat index, know what you got to do to stay safe, know what you got to do to keep your kids safe, get your work done, get it done the way you need to get it done. Don't freak out about not being in pads. You'll be fine. Get your kids in the spots they need to be, get your communication, your install, your verbiage, get all that done. When the weather cools down a little bit, you can start to bang again and do all the things you need. So got to take advantage of these practices. You got to stay safe. You got to hydrate. Coaches too, you guys got to hydrate. You got to understand how to, how to keep yourself ready to go when it is that hot out. Appreciate everything you guys do for me. Appreciate everything you do for PlayFast. Get us to 25,000. Get us to 4 million. If you like what we do here, check out Coach Mac on Patreon, www.patreon backslash Coach Mac. All the videos on Zoom clinics that we've done, if you're interested in those, email me, sting8740 at gmail.com. We'll talk about how you can get those uh, Zoom clinics that we've done. So football season is here. It's back. We love it. Won't play well until you play fast. I will see you guys next time.